So for number 54, um, they want us to find the base, the volume of um, a solid that has a base of a circular disk with the radius r, um, and then the parallel cross sections perpendicular to the base are squares. So I've drawn that in, and let me just add that up here is the value of the radius, right? It's going to touch both there and there. Um, and then let's see how we're going to talk about this volume, because what we're having here is we're basically summing up these squares whose base um, is the height of this function, right? And then we're going to sum them up um, as we move along the x-axis. So um, we're going to integrate with respect to x because we're summing up these squares in this direction. So our integral is going to be the integral, but instead of going from minus the radius all the way to positive the radius, because there's symmetry, we can just say, okay, it's twice the integral from zero all the way to r, right, on the x-axis. So it's twice the integral from zero to r, and then of ax dx, where this ax just means that this area is a function of x, right? Um, so let's think about how this this uh, how this area looks like. So our square is going to um, the equation that defines our square is x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? And when we, let's just isolate the x. So we have y is equal to r squared minus x squared. And then we take y squared, right? And then to find y, we just take the, the root. So we have r squared minus x squared. And we're taking the positive root here because we're just, um, we're being concerned with the positive side of it. We're not, because this is the, the positive root is from this side. We're not looking at the um, the negative root, which would be on this opposite side right here, because uh, we're just doing the positive side, and then we're doing twice that integral. Uh, it makes things much easier for us. So right now, we're only concerned with this positive root. So let's think about how we're going to get the area of the square, right? Because we're adding up the area of these squares. Well, if you think about it, the area, what's the area? Well, the area is the base squared, right? Because it's a square. Well, the height of the base, when we go out here, it touches the height of the function, right? So the, the base is equal to twice two times f of x. So because this base, it's basically half of where it touches the curve, right? Um, so we have two times f of x, that's our base. Therefore, our area is going to be 2 times f of x squared. Um, so once we have this, and we know that our f of x, it's basically described by this curve, right? Because this is the curve of the square. So, uh, sorry, of the circle. This curve here in purple, it describes this orange circle here. So basically, wherever we're at in a point, like if we're here, we're basically just measuring the height from the x-axis all the way up to the image of the function. That's why we're just using um, f of x. So the area now, we're going to put twice f of x, and this is f of x, so 2 times root of r squared minus x squared, and all of this squared, which is going to give us 4, um, the root is going to cancel out, so 4 times r squared minus x squared. So once we have the area, um, we're ready to put this back into our integral, because remember that we're just summing up the square, twice the sum from 0 all the way up to r. Um, so this is the integral, and I'm just going to put the 4 outside because it's a constant. 4, but it's times 2, right? So 4 times 2. Um, let me write this a little bit better. Hmm, it's not... Weirdly, it's not erasing for me, but that's fine. So 4 times 2, and then r squared minus x squared, and all of this times dx, which is the same thing as 8, and then r cubed, oops, I forgot to put my boundaries from 0 to r. Um, that's r cubed minus, oh, it's not r cubed, because we're not integrating with respect to, to r, right? We're integrating with respect to x. Um, for some reason, this my eraser isn't working, so let me let me try to kind of there. Okay, 
So this integral is going to go r squared times x minus x cubed over 3, because once more, I'm integrating with respect to x and not with respect to r. So what I did previously, which was to raise the r, that is incorrect, because my variable of integration is dx. And all of this times 8, and then evaluate it from 0 to r. So when I evaluate it, um, it's going to give me 8 times, I'm going to put r here, so 8 times r cubed minus r cubed um, over 3 which gives me, let's see, um, this is going to give me 2 thirds on the inside and then times 8, that's 16 r cubed divided by 3. Yeah, and that is the volume um, of my circular disk with radius r, whose um, cross sections per perpendicular to the base are squares.